coming by. I hope. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she mentioned she might be stopping by. She felt it was important we talked. Yeah, she said that she might be able to shed some light on her family history. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. What do you want to kind of sit down? And does this happen? What? Patient sister coming by and talking to you. No, not very often. Actually, never. Never. What exactly are you trying to do for us, Diana? Well, I guess I'm doing what all, all shrinks do. To paraphrase Freud, I'm trying to turn her neurotic misery into general unhappiness. So she can be like the rest of us. But she's not like the rest of us. How do you mean? Our father, um... left us when we were very little. And my father and Diane. My father. Um, my father was... was a... he had a lot of problems. Problems. Dr. Barr? She said you guys met. Yes, we did. Compared to Heather, I always felt like a like a caterpillar creeping and crawling. A caterpillar turns into a butterfly, doesn't it? Heather's the butterfly. Isn't that obvious? I had the dream again. I'm arranging flowers on a table as a centerpiece. Lilies, carnations. What was the third? Do you remember what we said about the stove ritual? The stove ritual's over, Dr. Barr. I haven't done it in a week. I'm checking the gun now. I make sure the safety's on and that it's loaded. Ten times every morning. What makes you feel that you need a gun? I don't. It's Heather's gun. She made me take it. How does it make you feel when you're checking the gun in the morning? Well, it's my surrogate penis. My safety being honest because I'm ambivalent about my phallic fantasies. And the bullets are semen. Do you think about the dangers having a loaded gun in your apartment? All the time. 